And how would Diebold's use of open source software, say if they had used open source software instead of proprietary software, how would this have changed the situation? As one Mozilla developer said, um, open source is not magic pixie dust. There are a lot of problems with electronic voting machines that don't have anything to do with whether the source is closed source or open source. However, having the machines be open source would have saved them a lot of embarrassment and errors um, in their process. Um, and it's not you know, completely out there to have an open source voting machine. Australia has open source voting machines that they use in their elections. And all those, those have, you know, they have their own problems. They don't have the problem of, you know, rampant bugs and error in their elections of this sort. Um, and so basically, I mean, the open source process makes your software more reliable, more secure, and people can place more trust in it because they can see how the thing works. Even if you're not qualified to read the code, you know, Maybe your, you know, maybe your neighbor or your friend who happens to be a computer scientist or some computer scientist who you happen to really trust has seen the code and looked through it, and you know, you can real, you can have some basis for trusting these machines. And if you're going to have people turn out for the, their elections, you know, they have to trust the elections and the machines they vote on, right? Well, so, I mean, open sourcing colleges is, I think it's up and coming. You know, when I, when I came into college, um, you know, I was com completely clueless about Linux. My friend had installed it on my, on my computer over the summer, and I arrived, I was, uh, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. And now freshmen are coming in who are, just, who are better than me, you know. Um, people, the, people come in, you know, they, they hit the ground running. They're already aware of open source and Linux. And it's really amazing, you know. It's um, it's definitely rising in the kids' consciousness. Of course, you know, most college students don't run Linux, but I think that is actually changing. There, um, a lot of people, you know, are interested in it. You know, they they look at they see their friends running, it and they're like, "Wow, that's pretty cool," you know, um, because it is cool. But um, most people are using, you know, more user-friendly open source programs. For instance, Mozilla Firefox is a popular web browser these days, um, which is better than Internet Explorer in many respects. It's, um, it's fun, and it's easy to use. It doesn't have security flaws. You know, CERT, CERT said recently that people should not use Internet Explorer, and they retracted that statement really quickly when Microsoft got on their case, but, you know, the fact is, Internet Explorer has holes, and it's not fun to use when you have viruses all over the place. So, I mean, we're seeing increased adoption of open source programs, even if people don't switch to open source operating systems. Right. So, so I mean, as I, as I said, that people use Mozilla Firefox. We've actually seen them on public area computers. In fact, they've been installed on all of our Windows machines at Swarthmore in the public areas. Um, and, you know, but people are also using OpenOffice, um, which is pretty much a replacement for Microsoft Office. Um, I've gotten a lot of my friends to use it because um, they're like, oh, wait, I forgot. Well, one of, my, one of my friends just got a new Macintosh computer, and she said, oh, wait, I forgot to buy Microsoft Office. I better run to the store and get it. Like, I was like, no, use OpenOffice. And she was like, oh, right, I can open Word documents with this, you know, because OpenOffice is compatible with Microsoft Office 5.